Today, the community of Kensington Market contains a mosaic of languages, including Yiddish, English, French, Italian, Portuguese, Spanish, Chinese, Korean, and many Caribbean languages. A short walk through the Kensington Market area today quickly reveals multiple layers of history in this tight-knit and dynamic community. Today, the boundaries of Kensington Market are marked from Spadina to Bathurst and College to Dundas. Houses in the neighborhood were built as early as the 1870s and the institutions built around these houses reflect the changing structure of the community. Through this project, we explore the linguistic landscape of the neighborhood's residents and characteristics through the years. We focus on the changes which have gone through the market since 1960. To illustrate the history and dynamics of the neighborhood, we draw on historical resources, census data, and personal interviews from current residents of the community. We utilize visual mediums such as video and illustration for the viewer to best experience the multilingual landscape. In order to uncover the language trends within the Kensington Market area, we look at the language statistics provided by Census Canada. We are interested in the mother tongue languages of residents as opposed to the languages they speak. The statistics are divided into 10-year increments and we examine the top five mother tongue languages spoken in each decade. A few aspects of these statistics are worth noting, such as in 1961, all of the statistics were separated by gender. Also, the 1981 census data did not track specific languages other than English and French. All other languages were put into the other category, so it is difficult to see particular language trends for this decade. The land which now constitutes the Kensington Market was originally purchased by George Dennison in 1815. This land began as a single estate named Bellevue, but soon colonies developed on the west side of the property and a community developed. By 1900, the Dennison family had sold the estate and as Cochrane says, the Kensington area was built up almost solidly from college to Dundas. By the 1870s, the area was inhabited predominantly by English speakers and institutions such as St. Stephen's Anglican Church were built. A new wave of Jewish immigrants to the neighborhood began around 1900. Most of these immigrants were rural Orthodox Jews from Eastern Europe who had fled persecution and were immersed in poverty. Around this community of people, many institutions were built, including Jewish synagogues, schools, and community centers. The market soon came to be known as the Jewish market, a term which lasted well into the 1970s. As Cochrane says, far from being a tourist attraction, it was shunned by most of Toronto's citizenry. The neighborhood it served during its heyday, in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, was filled with immigrants, not only Jews, but Italians, Ukrainians, Hungarians, and a scattering of Blacks. Sam Lenansky says, Everyone came to this area because I think it reminded them of their own villages because it was like a secluded village. If you came in here, it didn't matter what you spoke. The next wave of Italian and Portuguese immigrants came to the area starting in the late 1950s, and by the 60s and 70s, the Kensington Market became a major Portuguese community. In 1961, Italian was the second largest language group, but the number of speakers had already begun to sharply decline by 1971. In 2011, only 15 speakers cite Italian as being their mother tongue. Luckily, we were able to interview one of these remaining 15 speakers. In the 1961 statistics, Portuguese was not even listed among the mother tongue languages. However, some of the 56 members of the other language category may have been Portuguese speakers. By the 1970s, Portuguese was a huge presence within the community. Cochrane says, they became the new Kensington colony with a different style, but the same feeling of community. This community was reflected through many businesses such as fish stores, bakeries, a bookstore, and a radio station. The number of Portuguese speakers is steadily decreasing and is expected to decrease even more in the future. However, the Portuguese presence can still be seen in the community with various businesses still flourishing today. During this period, people from the West Indies also came to the area and established a Caribbean influence and built stores that are still seen today. These speakers are not accurately reflected through the statistics provided by Census Canada. 
At this same time, many stores along Spadina were transforming from Jewish stores and restaurants and began to emerge as Asian businesses. According to the statistics, Asian languages are currently on the rise in the Kensington Market area. This may be due to its close proximity to the neighboring Chinatown area. It wasn't until 2001 census that the language category Chinese was separated into Cantonese, Mandarin, and Chinese, not otherwise specified. Christina Chu Schwamm says, It is the story of the immigrant, from one group to another group to another group. You walk into Kensington and you really have a mix. You see a mixture of faces. You see the people who have been here for a long time and the people who are new. That mix is there and the area has allowed that mix. The number of English speakers began to decline in 1971 but has steadily started to climb from 1991. Presently, native English speakers are the most dominant language group in Kensington Market. This may be due to the trendiness of Augusta Avenue and its emergence as a notable area in Toronto's entertainment district. How long have you lived in the Kensington? 50 years. 50 years? Uh, we're in a grocery store that I've operated. Uh, my family's origins uh, started back in 1953 here in Kensington Park. Um, I've lived around the market for years, and there are times in my life where I've supplemented places inside the market. We've been here in Kensington Market for almost 40 years. Through this project, we explore the linguistic landscape of the neighborhood's residents and characteristics through the years. We focus on the changes which have gone through the market since 1960. I think that this is the heart of the market. Things to do with food, fresh food, raw food. Early in the morning, this street is opening up. You know, this is where, where things are, are happening. You know, the bakery is, is opening up and the, uh, the fish stores are, are setting up. Vegetable places, the deliveries, they're coming back from the food terminal. With, uh, fresh vegetables. The restaurants and the cafes and the bars, they don't, you know, they don't open up until later. So place I shop very often with students. And it's both clothing and groceries. So we go up clothing on one side, groceries on the other. For Sassmart, this one right here, which is Kitchen wares on one side and clothing on another. It was two business, actually, it's two businesses. Right? They've been around a lot. And very neat stuff in the year. Very good quality, very low price clothing. Sansings on, on Kensington Avenue, they're, they're the oldest here in the middle. That family, they used to sell them exclusively bananas. There are three cheese places. But there's always been good, good quality cheese. Uh, we're down to three fish stores. There used to be 14. And they were specialized. They would be like a Portuguese fish store and they were very, very exotic types of seafood. I'm here to get the you know, types of bread that no one else was selling in Toronto. What are some of the seafood? Cheese magic. <laughs> right there, you know, Cheese Magic, the Army Surplus store is amazing, Kitaku is phenomenal. I got some high quality. Get some good stuff. Oh, there's a nice comic shop up there. There's the vintage, some, some are older, some are older. Vintage clothing, Kensington, that's a big, that's all. Related to uh, the courage my love, they were sort of the first. There's a few bars on this, on this uh, stretch as well. It's a very complicated area. Yes. You think you get to know it because there are all these different layers to things. It's very stimulating just to you know, live here because the only thing normal here is the app. You're always going to see or run into something. It's a little bit strange. What languages do you speak? Italian. 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 What language did you grow up speaking at home? Uh, Ukrainian. By me, it was English and Hungarian. Okay, and what language do you feel most comfortable speaking to? 
today? Oh, English. I was born here, so uh, English has always been my first language. Oh, English. So what kind of languages do you hear when you're walking down the street? Well, right now it's predominantly English, right? But uh, um, you go back 50 years ago, this was the Jewish market, and then it became the Portuguese market. Occasionally, Hungarian. After that, uh, you start to see a lot of Asian and uh, Caribbean. Languages from Southeast Asia, Vietnamese, Chinese. And, and now it's, it, it's just such a mixture. I would say here in the market specifically, the, the range of languages is probably declining because of what's, what's happening to the area. In terms of like who's on the street shopping. But the existing stores that stand is you can come down here and pretty much shop in any language, right? So in other words, if you're from Latin America, there are stores that cater exactly to what your needs are and, and you can converse in the language that, that you want. Right? What kind of changes have you seen the Kensington area go through? Well, you see changes as far as the demographics of the people here, right? Uh, back in 1953, it was immigrants that came uh, uh, to the city and uh, uh, they saw Kensington Market as an opportunity to set up shop, and in many cases they lived above the stores. And there were large families here. As years progressed, uh, you have different ways of different immigrant groups coming in. It's just like it's an area of transition, as is any platform. Uh, you've seen a lot of stores change over, uh, but you've also seen a lot of stores stay. There's like some really big staples here. There's always been change here since I came. You could see you know, one store would close and you went over. But in the last 10 years, it's just been really accelerated pace of change. And over now the last uh, 10 years, that's totally changed. Because all the families have now moved out, and you're starting to see more and more of the students. What kind of changes would you like to see in the Kensington Market area in the next 20 years? Well, change is kind of inevitable. I don't know if I want to see change. I just recognize that it's happening. It's a great area, you know, it's a piece of, of history, right? And it would be a shame to lose it. You know, it'd be no different than saying, you know, let's just tear down Fort York or one of, or one of the uh, major um, uh, landmarks in Toronto. You know, you, it would be a shame to lose it. And uh, the community here is fighting to try to keep it alive. I hope that uh, you've got a really strong voice for certain things here, and I hope that certain entities <laughs> and potentially the, a Walmart coming in on that or south of college that um, a typical store like Walmart comes in to cannibalize an area. They want to be the last business standing. So if all the food players start um, disappearing one by one, then what ends up happening is what comes in, in, in its place. You see it continue to be um, a daytime market instead of it continuing to transition to a daytime market. And we're seeing a lot of bars and, and, and nightclubs and uh, what everybody's afraid of is Kensington Market may become the next entertainment district, right? And the entertainment district is now kind of happy they've gotten rid of all the bars because it was a nightmare as far as police, security, drugs. In the past, the big fear was that this would become like Toronto's Yorkville, which is a very high neighborhood. It used to be uh, very bohemian like in the 60s. Or maybe becoming the next Yorkville. And then, you know, all the charm and the culture of Kensington Market would be gone. Many people say there's no re there's really no reason to go outside of the boundaries here. And if you do go out outside the boundaries, it's uh, it's referred to as an out of Kensington experience.